Cavle and then Curra Taylor Crossdale and Tori TV. Cavle and Hat Trek Taylor Crossdale and Cali Hat Bed Gun. Good about Wilson. Wilson at Tyrese Owen. Lana Taylor Crossdale. Tackle that Trohun. Kick me the old for Hawkins. Oh, McCallie clear up on the arm. Well, of course, that's Harrington. There, Kit can Harrington. Through Goy Dwick or Goy Sad, of course. I keep you. Isaac Jones. Taylor Crossdale. Damuna Dyer. Oh, Dyer. Trian and Methy. So, as you saw in the intro, we've got work to do tonight. We're a goal down from the first leg, but we were not disgraced considering we were playing a professional side from Ukraine. We create some chances, we miss some chances, we hit a post. In honesty, Zoria probably could have scored another on the night as well. And that was the home leg. We're going to be away tonight. I think that's going to be a very different proposition. But just look at us rubbing shoulders with the likes of Wolfsburg, Twente, Valencia, West Ham United. We're doing well, I think, to be playing European football so early in the quest. But tonight... I think it's going to be the end of the road and then we can concentrate on our league form. We've managed to bring some transfers in, which has been the name of the game ever since we arrived. One of them, we're going to be able to play tonight because he signed in time for us to be registered. And that player is one that we showed you last episode. Lloyd Marsh Hughes accepting our contract. He's in. We're going to play him as a central midfielder on attack. We've also managed to sign two others who are not going to be registered for tonight's game in Europe but will be available for the second game in today's episode when we take on our first league encounter. Now, don't get too excited about either of these signings. They have some limitations. Dean Thurman is 36 years old, so as you might expect, the physicals are, well, not what they might have been a few years ago. But mentally, he is way above the level that we are playing at, and even technically, I think he's going to be a very good defensive midfielder acting as a shield or a screen in front of our back four, trying to bring a bit of experience, determination, leadership, some aggression and some bravery in front of our back four. So Dean will be playing in the league games, or fortunately not in Europe. And we've also brought in Irish player Ocean O'Reilly, who physically is actually pretty good. It's more mentally and technically where there are gaps but he's not particularly weak in any area of his game. Apart from the occasional seven, all of his key attribute areas for a defender, I'm thinking a left back, are eight or nine or higher. So hopefully he is going to be a solid citizen for us in the defence as well. But only one of those is going to be available for tonight's game. Otherwise, we're going to be putting out what I think is going to be our strongest squad as we try and overturn a one-goal deficit. But as I said, Let's not get any hopes up for this. And we are underway. If we're going to have any hope tonight, it's going to be because they've got a goalkeeper who I saw drinking in the tunnel before the game. So Smirnoff might look a little bit ropey during the first half at least until he shakes off the malaise. We have conceded two shots early on in this game. Our goalkeeper is already playing at a seven. And we're into our second highlight of the match already. And alas, it's not one for us. Our goalkeeper comes and... But he gets something on it, let's be positive. And they head another early chance over the bar. It's a shaky start, but we are still in the game. Good enough to put an encouraged shout out as we have our first shot of this match. We've got Kinsella, Taylor Crossdale and Justin Hawkins up front, our dream trio. We just need to hang in the game long enough for one of them to go forward and create a little bit of magic. Now they've struck the crossbar. It's been, well, a fiery little start from them. There is Smirnoff in goal. He's playing a 6.7. I mean, not sure he even knows what day it is. We've had a second shot. 31 minutes, we've not had a highlight. Maybe this could be the counter-attack that gets us back into the game. He's got to be offside, hasn't he? We're looking, Raph. We're looking. Is it not? Oh my goodness, I thought he was a mile off here. Hold on. He's taking a nudge. He's offside there. Surely. Surely VAR has got to review that. He looked a country mile off. They didn't give us the best angle to judge that, so I'm sticking with my original intent. But that's tie over, I think, isn't it? 2-0 down. Five shots. 
none of them on target. We have pressed a little, but we've not had an attacking highlight of note. I think we've got to be careful with how we speak to the players because this is, well, a tough fixture for them. Let's just tell them to keep working hard until full time. It's more important that we make a positive start in the league, I think. And in our formative days at the club, we want to keep the players on side, keep morale up. We're trying to bring in new players, so keeping the, the squad content whilst we're bringing in these new players and getting them to gel, I think is going to be important. This could be a third. It is. Okay. Now that is well and truly tie over. So we start turning our attention to our first full season in Wales, which is where I think we need to get your comments down below. When you're taking on a league that has a dominant force, like Ligue 1 has Paris Saint-Germain, like the Bundesliga has Bayern Munich, we have a micro version of that. Granted, I'm not saying Total Network Solutions are like Bayern or PSG, but they are superior to the other sides in this league. What are your tactics for trying to be able to defeat them within two or three seasons? We've got a healthy budget, but so do TNS, I would guess. And they've got regular European football. I'd imagine they'd go a couple of rounds as well. So they've been making money from European football. Oh, now the flag goes up. Now they find an offside. It's Taylor Crossdale looks dangerous. So I'm guessing that they're going to be very well resourced as well. I noticed. They had the younger brother of Newcastle's long staff amongst their ranks, who I think they've signed during my game world. I don't think he's someone that plays for them in real life. So they can clearly offer a little bit of wages. So how do we try and reel them in? Should we be looking to spend some of the £600,000 budget that we've got? Should we be scouting further afield than just the UK? Should we be trying to conserve that transfer budget? and make it work longer for us by pumping it all into the wage budget and trying to attract stars. But what kind of stars should we be trying to attract? Do we go down the veteran route like Dean Furman, or should we be looking for younger players that maybe we can sell on? Or do players not really have a big enough transfer value in Wales for us to be able to sell them on? So I'd appreciate all of your tips and support and advice down in the comments as we, I'm afraid, are about to go 4-0 down on aggregate, 3-0 down on the night. I knew this away trip was going to be a tricky one. Maybe we should put a couple of players out of their misery, keep them fresh for our first domestic action, bring on some of the 15-year-olds who are going to be lambs to the slaughter. All right, I know the XGs are looking bad, but on the old match stats, 10 shots, 2 on target, a goal disallowed, an XG approaching 1, Taking on professional opposition, it's not terrible. Their XG is pretty high, but it's been pumped up by the fact that they had a penalty. We've gone out and we've gone out comprehensively, 4-0 on aggregate. But I'm going to have to say, I'm not hugely disappointed with the performance over two legs. I think we've already shown that we are a side that can create some chances. So I'm beginning to think the challenge at Haverford West is going to be a little bit tougher than I had originally legislated for. We've just played Penny Bonds in the League Cup. I think Penny Bonds were a pretty good side, but they beat us 2-0. It was a fairly even game. Neither side had an XG of greater than a 1, and we did have more shots on target than them. But Kinsella, Taylor Crossdale, Akpan all played very poorly. We also had injuries to Furman and Taylor Crossdale in this game. So it wasn't a very good match for us at all. I'm questioning the tactic. I'm questioning our ability to bring in players because the scouts are out there now. We've got one scout who is having a look around Europe. We've got another scout who is concentrating on the UK and Ireland. And the quality of what both are signing is pretty poor, I will tell you. The only player I think I'm interested in is Swiss player Ruben Carrera, who could be a right winger or right back, but he is not interested in negotiating a contract. I'm not really sure why the scouts are wasting our time with him at the moment. There's not a lot to bring in, and I've got serious concerns whether what we've got already is going to be strong enough even to finish mid-table, never mind get the board that third-place finish that they want to qualify us 
for another year of European football. One bit of good news, I suppose, is in the finances. Having just exited Europe, we got a massive payout. We got £85,000 for losing that tie. We got another £300,000 for making it as far as the second qualifying round, and another £300,000 just for turning up and participating. So the best part of £700,000 rolled in, keeping the club's balance looking nice and healthy. We are way below the wage budget, so I don't think we should be spending too much of that. We look like a club that might just break even without that European football. Certainly, last season dictates that maybe we might even lose a little bit of cash, but if we can qualify for Europe again, it will replenish the reserves. But as I say, whether this squad is going to be good to qualify again, I am none too sure. Let's get out there and start our league campaign today against Newtown. And you never know, in 90 minutes' time, everything might look an awful lot better than it does now. Okay, we're thinking positive thoughts. Positive thoughts, send me your energy as we kick off away against Newtown. And I feel like we need to make a strong start. As I said in episode one when we joined Haverford Quest, I think this is very sackable. I think we've got an ambitious board. We've certainly got the budgets that suggest that we should be trying to challenge the teams at the top. I just don't think I can bring in the players, certainly not yet, that are going to help us to do that. So we need some positive results early. If we're in the bottom half of the table, my goodness, we could be gone after 10 or 12 games. We have made a reasonable start to this one. Two shots already. Reasonable XG compared to our opponents. And we've got a corner early that O'Reilly is going to sling into the box. He's got everybody at the near post, including the Malteser who strikes the far post with his little glanced header. At least that was a decent opportunity for us. And we come forward again. Here's Furman. Back to fitness. Akpan. A little header over the bar. This is a better start. Let's encourage the players. Now we need to try and find that goal before half time. That will put us in the ascendancy. We've had eight efforts. Three of those have been on target. Dan Hawkins is playing fabulously over on the right wing. Otherwise, he's the only player that's hit a seven. We've kind of slowed down a little now. Ten shots, but only three of them on target. An XG above a one suggests we should have scored. But we've not even had another attacking highlight. We reach half time. So old Dean Furman has had a terrible first half, fully justifying his, what, 400 quid a week that we're throwing his way. So we've changed his role at the base of the midfield. We've asked him to be a defensive midfielder rather than an anchor man. As we finally take the lead in this game, it's only taken us three minutes of the second half. And Justin Hawkins absolutely barrels one into the net. It was O'Reilly's corner. Thomas Sadler gets the ball. That's a intelligent bit of play and Hawkins who we have signposted as potentially being our key man for us so long as no other clubs are make a bid for him gets us into the lead now we just need to get the job done hold on and secure our first three points and then we can just hope that the scouts will find us a couple of gems I don't think we need much I think we could do with a strong center half Maybe some cover at right back, goalkeeper, a striker, a couple of wingers, another central midfielder. And then we just need some backup, so not much. But if we could find just a couple of really strong players, then I think we might be OK. And I think our real building work is going to happen during the next summer when I think we might be able to start using that budget to have a good run at the scouting, find the targets that we want, and then make our little bid to take on TNS. This season, I think it's about just trying to get through it without getting sacked and build up the scouting network. You never know. We might surprise a few as Kian Kinsella has a go from outside of the box. It was a, an ambitious effort, shall we say, but another one that just you know, announces to Newtown that we're here to try and threaten their goal. We've hit 65 minutes. Our shots on target to shots ratio is not great. Performance of our strikers is not good either. Let's see what we've got on the bench. 
Okay, Harry Franklin is on as a sub, but I've actually taken Taylor Crossdale off because he was struggling with injury and with fitness. And we've moved Marsh Hughes, who I was playing in the central midfield with an attack duty. I've moved him to be the striker, a role he's more than accustomed to playing. His pace is not great, but otherwise he looks like a good striker. And we'll see if he can get on the end of any chances that we might create. Here is Justin Hawkins. Plays it back to Richards. Hawkins picks it up again. Gets it to Akpan. Don't shoot from there. All right. Ignore the coach on the sidelines. Shoot from there on your left foot. If you like, you can rifle it into the top corner of the net. I'm not going to object. Hawkins, has he got his second involvement of the game? He has. He's got a goal and an assist now. As Akpan hits that from more. 25 yards. And we are now 2-0 up. And I am breathing a little more easily. As O'Reilly sends in a corner, and there is the big Malteser, who heads one across the goalkeeper into the far corner of the net. Now it's 3-0. And maybe some of my nerves, having lost to Penny Bonds and not really being very good in that game, and thinking that maybe we might be a bottom half side, maybe I'm being a little bit more optimistic now, because we have looked good in this game. I don't actually know how touted Newtown are this season. Maybe they're a terrible side who are forecasted to come bottom. This could be our easiest fixture of the campaign. But we've certainly done a good job, apart from Dean Furman, who I've noticed is still pulling a 6.4 and maybe, possibly, the biggest waste of money that I could possibly have bought in. I just saw some of those mental attributes and thought he's going to be a great leader out on the pitch. Get him in. Turns out he's had a very tough couple of first games as we seed our clean sheet as we move into stoppage time. Sodi to the edge. It's a bit unchallenged there, isn't it? And McGonagall is not even marked as he heads in to an almost unguarded net. We still won the game, but that was a troubling bit of defending. But we will not knock the fact that we have got three points. What concerns me is Furman, Kinsella and Taylor Crossdale when he was on. Maybe the front three that I thought was going to be very good for us this season is not as strong as I had assumed that the scouts are not finding me anything so far that we might be able to replace it with. But Hawkins, well, he certainly is looking the part. And now we are going to go away and play a whole heap of games because I'm conscious of the fact this is episode three of season two of Haverford Quest. We've only just got to our first fixture of the season. So when you come back, I am going to try and got through a huge chunk of this season. And hopefully I will have strengthened the squad and replenished the ranks and we will be flying high. In the top half of the table, you never know, we might even be in an unlikely title chase in Season 2. Quest.